Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Virtual Mac YouTube channel. So today we're going to be diving into something crucial for anyone running multi-session as a virtual desktop or managing virtual machines in the cloud, understanding and optimizing the page file. So if you ever wondered what a page file is, why it's important and how you can use a tent disk in Azure to really enhance that user experience of your session hosts, you're in the right place. Whether you're new to cloud computing or seasoned pro, this video is going to give you the insights that you need to keep those users happy. The VM SKU which you're using can be critical to determine how the page file is placed and the size of the page file. This can directly affect the user experience of the multi session host and it's something which never really gets considered or thought about. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks of the best VM SKUs to use, how to ensure the page file is placed on the correct disk. So stick around, hit that like button and let's get started. So now let's look at what a page file actually is and why it's so critical for the operating system. So. A page file, also known as a paging file or swap file, is used by an operating system when the physical memory is insufficient to handle all the running processes and applications. So here's five things that a page file is used for. Number one, when the system RAM is fully utilized, if all the available memory is occupied, the operating system will use the page file as an overflow area to store portions of active memory that aren't currently being used by running applications. This process is called paging. We also have something called swap space. The page file acts as a form of virtual memory, extending the amount of memory available beyond the physical RAM by swapping inactive pages of memory to disk. Okay. Secondly, we have system stability and crash prevention. So by using a page file, the operating system can avoid those out of memory areas that otherwise may cause applications to crash or for the system to become unresponsive. This is especially important for ensuring the stability of multi-session environments like Azure Virtual Desktop. Thirdly, managing large number of processes. So in environments where there's a large number of processes are running, as in Azure Virtual Desktop multi-session environments, the cumulative memory demands can be high. So the page file helps by offloading less critical memory pages, keeping the system running smoothly. So for users or applications that require multitasking, the page file can manage the memory demands by switching between different tasks, especially when those tasks are memory intensive. Four performs optimization. So the operating system actively manages the working set of applications, the part of the process's memory that is kept in RAM by moving parts that are not actively used in the page file. This can optimize the memory usage by ensuring that the most critical data stays in fast physical memory. And lastly, we've got system diagnostics. So in some cases, the page file is used to store crash dump files, as in memory dumps, when the system crashes. So this data is critical for diagnostics and troubleshooting system issues. So we keep the crash dump on the temp file, and therefore we can retrieve that data if we need to. So now that you can hopefully see why it's so important to ensure that the page file is placed on a temp disk to ensure that the host remains responsive and the users keep on having a good experience. So now let's look at why we'd want to place the page file on the temp disk rather than a managed disk. So ideally we want the page file to be sitting on a temp disk which offers a vastly improved IOPS compared to a managed disk. So a managed disk will give you about 500 IOPS whereas a temp disk will give you about 5000 IOPS. So Using a page file on a temp disk in Azure offers several advantages, particularly in environments where there is high load on the session host, i.e. multi-session desktops. So here's the key benefits. Benefit number one, improved performance. So we get faster IO because the temp disk in Azure VMs are typical local SSDs, which offer significant and faster read and write speeds compared to standard managed disks. This can lead to quicker access times for the page file, improving the overall performance of the VM, especially under heavy load where memory paging is required. Reduce latency. So since the temp disk is local to the VM, it reduces the latency associated with accessing the page file as it doesn't need to traverse the network storage. Number two, cost efficiency. So there's no additional cost for a temp disk. The temp disk is included with the VM, meaning that you can utilize the high-speed local storage without incurring the extra expenses associated with the premium or auto disks. However, there is a slight increase in cost of using VMs with a temp disk, which we'll explore later in this video. Number three, disk optimization. So we free up the managed disk space. So placing the page file on the temp disk frees up space on your managed OS or data disks, allowing more room for your applications and data that need to persist across VM reboots. Efficient use of temp disk. So 
Since the temp disk is volatile and resets on VM reboots, utilizing if the page file, which is also volatile data, is a good match, ensuring that the valuable persistent storage isn't used for temporary operations. Number four, scalability. So Azure comes with temp disk that scale in size with VM SKUs. This means that as you scale your VMs up, the temp disk also increases in size, allowing the page file to expand accordingly without manual intervention. Number five, risk mitigation for open visioning less impact on persistent data. So in scenarios where the VM over-provisioned and relies heavily on the page file, placing on the temp disk means that the load doesn't affect your persistent data disks, which otherwise slow down critical operations or increase the risk of disk over bottlenecks on your primary disk. So in summary, the page file on the temp disk in Azure can significantly enhance VM performance, improved user experience, reduce costs and optimize storage resources, making it a really good choice uh, for Azure-based workloads, especially in multi-session environments like Azure Virtual Desktop. However, it's crucial to monitor and manage this setup to mitigate the risk associated with the volatile nature of the temp disk. So now let's take a look and see what the, the cost differences are between these VMs, okay? So um, we wanna see if it's gonna cost anything extra, okay? Um, so let's, First of all, decide which VM SKUs that we want to use. We'll show you which VMs to pick, okay? And how to determine whether they have a temp disk or not. So I'm just going to flick over to, to my other screen. Okay, so you'll see here, um, I'm on the Azure pricing screen and that's basically showing me um, what the different VM SKUs are, um, what the processes are uh, and what disks they support. So. We'll start off at this point. So we've got one with a temp disk. And the reason why I can see that because we can see the temporary storage. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna pick a D8 DSV5 as a reference point. So that has 30 gigs of RAM. And we've got temporary storage set to 300 gig gigabit, okay? So we can see that's 297 pounds and 76 pounds a month, okay? With mature hybrid benefit. Right, so now we want to pick the equivalent of the end, but without a temp disk. Okay, so let's just scroll up a bit and find one. So we want one with the Intel um, processor. So let's find on here. So this has got the um, Intel processor, um, but this one doesn't support premium SSD. So we want one which does support premium SSD. So we're going to pick this one. Okay, so same VM. Um, Intel DM processor, um, so it supports premium SSD, and we're going to pick the DASV5, okay, um, which has got 30 gigs of RAM but zero temporary storage, okay. So that's the key thing here, right? So it doesn't have a temp disk. So this one's 252 pounds a month compared to, if we go back up here, 297 pounds a month, okay. So let's see what the actual Azure Cast calculator is actually showing me what this is gonna cost us, okay? So if we go over to pricing calculator in Blue Peter style, here's one that I had earlier. Um, so we've picked a D8 DSV5 there, and we've also got the um, D8 SV5, okay? So let's start up with the D8 SV5. So we've picked 10 VMs. We've got a premium SSD disk, 128 gigs. And that's telling me the social cost for that is £1,829.04. Okay. So let's compare that to one with a temp disk on it. Okay. So this one, which is the D8 DSV5, that has a temp disk on it. Um, and that's showing me a total cost of £1,990.95. Okay. So You'll have to excuse my very bad mathematics skills. So if we take 1990.95, uh, basically minus that into 1829.04, that's gonna give us a price difference of 161 pounds a month. Okay, which is not too bad. Um, so if we think about that from a performance perspective, um, it essentially means that our VMs are going to be a lot 
more performant because the temp disk is on the uh, the page files on the temp disk. Sorry. Um, so me personally, I would be more than happy to pay that a little bit extra because you may also be able to fit an additional one or two users um, onto those hosts as well, especially if you're um, a bit more RAM RAM constrained. So um, definitely worth the extra cost in my opinion. Okay, so now let's actually do some testing. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna compare a VM with a temp disk and a page file with a VM without temp disk and without a page file, just to see what the user experience is like when we start to reach um, the memory limits, okay? So I've built a VM without a temp disk. So we're gonna log on to that VM, and then have a look and see what the Windows configuration is like out of the box, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, launch that one, so give me a second. First thing, we look at the system information to see what that's telling us. So if I go to system, system information, so it's saying we've got a page file and it's five gig and it's on the C drive. Okay. But what's actually quite interesting is if we go to um, settings um, and then it's about and then advanced settings and then the performance advanced page file so same we're not using a page file okay um and that's what the setting is out of the box so remember this because we're going to do a direct comparison against the vm with a temp disk and see what that's been automatically set um and configured to okay so next test that we're going to do is we're going to launch um 500 instances of Microsoft Internet Explorer. Okay, so uh, just to see what that looks like. So go to PowerShell ISE. Okay. Okay, and then we're going to launch this and then basically let that run and then see what happens to the memory. So if I kick that off. Okay, and then we go and launch so we can see those being launched so you see those go okay and then we'll come back shortly and have a look and see um, see what's happening there okay so interesting to see the results so see you shortly Okay, so we've gone and built a um, second host, this time with a temp disk. Okay, so now let's go and have a look and see what the differences are um, for, for that VM. Okay, so first thing you notice is um, it's now saying the temp disk is on the D drive, right? Um, sorry, the page file is on the D drive. Um, and it's saying system manage. So previously um, it said it wasn't using the page file and it's now saying system manage. Okay, so we now have a page file. Now I didn't know this, so this is news to me now. Um, I presumed on the uh, a VM with no temp disk, um, it would set the page file onto the C drive, but it seems it hasn't. Um, so on the VM with the temp disk, it's automatically used the um, temp disk as a page file and then configure it to system manage. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna repeat the test that I did previously uh, as in launching like 500 uh, instances um, of Edge and then see what happens. See if it actually started to use um, that page file. But interestingly enough, the previous test that I did, it actually crashed the OS, um, ignore that. Um, it crashed the OS um, and it actually um, stopped the VM from functioning, okay? Um, I couldn't do anything. So let's now repeat that test and then I'll come back to the results later and just to see what that looks like. Okay, so I can see the page file being used. Um, so it's going higher than it was before. So let's see what happens when we launch um, more instances. So it's running at 96% memory, stuff's still responsive, everything is looking good. So let's kick off more 
Internet Explorer instances and see what happens. Okay, so go. So I can see, so there we go. So we can see the page file being used. It's increasing. Yeah, so previously what we're seeing, the OS was pretty much just crashing. Um, we can see all the memory being used. Um, we can see an increase in the paging file being used. Okay. So it's now using 10% of the paging file. And the OS is more respon still responsive, right? So what we saw previously is um the host crashing because there's no memory being used right and there's no page file being used but what we see now is i've still got all the internet explorer instances okay um so how many we got now there you go so you can see that i've got a thousand new tabs running um and the us is slow but still responsive It's not crashing okay so previously um we literally just couldn't launch it was saying no nope, no more resources available pretty much okay so um yeah the res results from from the testing that we've done today pretty much what i expected to see um based on the experiences that i've had with customers um so yeah quick summary um obviously page file really important so when you run a vm with no page file um when you try to launch more resources that the memory's got um it'll just crash the vm will become unresponsive um the testing that we've done today we chose a vm with um a temp disk it automatically used that vm with the page file we run the same test that we did with the same uh, vm same code um and what we saw was it started to use that page file and um, to compensate for the memory and resources that it didn't have and the os remained responsive um, and the applications were able to run successfully okay so it would have been a difference between a host being crashing and being unresponsive to a host being slow but but usable okay um which is probably a better user experience of the host just kind of crashing so um, my takeaway from this is um, always use a VM with a temp disk for, for multi-session hosts um, because you'll find that having that page file there is a backup option um, just in case we do run out of resources. Now, we should not get to the stage where we're running out of resources um, because if we're using like Nerdio for auto-scaling, um, it's going to know that we're filling up with RAM um, and therefore stop that from happening. So. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you found um, the results interesting. Um, I certainly have. It's been a lesson for me as well. Um, so I'll catch you in a next video. Mm -hmm.